Hey, welcome to Live Hive, where you can stay up to date with the latest updates about marketing, sales, and business. Persuasion. It is the heart of sales. You are trying to convince someone to use a product, to use a service, or to believe that your brand is better than a competitor's. Sometimes that means motivating a specific action. Often it means changing someone's mind. No matter what, you will need to persuade your audience if you are going to succeed. Does that mean you need psychic level mind altering powers? Nope. You just have to know a bit about human psychology. Today, I'm going to teach you. This is a list of my favorite 10 persuasion techniques, all of which can be tapped by marketers, advertisers, and salespeople to persuade an audience. Use them wisely and ethically. I mean it. Number one, reciprocity. Reciprocity is a social standard that states that if I give you something, you may feel obligated to return the favor. Essentially, this allows me to ask for something in return instead of waiting for an intentional act from you. Reciprocity has evolutionary advantages. A widely shared feeling that will pay future obligations encourages initial transactions between individuals. People can give items, services, and time to others with the confidence that they will be reimbursed. There are some ways to apply it to your store. For example, offer a tripwire, an irresistible and low-priced product designed not to make cash, but to change the relationship from casual visitor to actual buyer. Or you can offer a gift or discount, including free shipping, a welcome deal for first-time buyers, product samples, an unexpected gift to go along with an ordered product, etc. You can also even send appreciation cards and notes to existing customers to make them happy and engaging with your store. Number two, consistency. You can tap into consistency by getting someone else to commit. Consistency states that once you commit to something, especially in writing, you are more likely to follow through or maintain the stance. People like it when their thoughts and actions are aligned. Once you get someone to commit, they begin to engage in self-persuasion. That is, people start to justify related actions to themselves and others. There are simple measures that you can apply to your store to get customers to commit. You can push visitors to subscribe to your email list or download a relevant free resource. Once they have made a small commitment, they are more likely to make an enormous commitment. You can also encourage social sharing at every stage. The more public the commitment, the better. Number three, social proof. Social proof is also one of the principles of persuasion, which maintains that people are especially likely to perform specific actions if they can relate to the people who serve the same steps before them. Humans are naturally social. Yes, even before social media came along. As a result, we are heavily influenced by those around us, especially if we hold them in high regard. Social proof states that you base your actions and beliefs on those around you. You are most likely to follow the lead of someone similar to you, especially in situations where you are very uncertain. Often, there is comfort in just doing what everyone else is doing. Ratings, reviews, share counts, testimonials, social proof is all around you. But if you want to apply the social proof in your store, then you can. Have an influencer or expert endorse or provide a testimonial for your product. You can also show the number of people who have purchased recently, or how many people are currently viewing the product. And the most exciting thing you can add is trust icons, like media logos and mentions. Number four, likeness. Likeness states that you tend to say yes or oh yes, I agree to people you like. That comes down to two factors, physical attraction. Studies have shown time and time again that, that physically attractive people are more persuasive. Similarity, you are more likely to be persuaded by someone you deem similar to yourself. It translates pretty easily to store design and voice of customer copywriting. There are different ways to apply it to your store. For example, come across as a friend, not a big corporation. The more human and familiar your brand seems, the more support the similarities produce from your customers. Some stores do this by donating a portion of their profit to a relevant charity. Number five, authority. Authority states that you tend to accept that if any expert or individual of authority says something, it must be genuine. There's a very famous study, the Milgram experiment, connected to this persuasion technique. It was conducted in 1961. Two members, a teacher and a learner, were set in two different rooms. The learner was hooked up to an electric shock machine, which the teacher controlled. 
A supervisor wearing the lab coat was also present. He told the teacher to inquire about the learner's questions and shock him when he replied incorrectly. After each incorrect answer, the voltage expanded up 450 volts. The catch? The learner was a performing artist, making fake pain noises after each shock. The study investigated how much pain the members were willing to inflict on a guiltless individual if educating by an individual of authority. It turns out, a lot. Most teachers were willing to allow 450 volts if required. Now, the question is how to apply it to your store. The answer is simple. You can build authority by highlighting qualifications like job title, product awards, etc. Even if you doubt yourself, you can think about borrowing authority from someone else via an endorsement, a product review, etc. Number six, scarcity. Scarcity states that when something is restricted in quantity, you assign more value to it. Remember when Johnny Carson helped create a toilet paper deficiency in 1973? During his opening monologue of The Tonight Show, he clowned about an upcoming toilet paper deficiency. People hurried out to purchase it, making a genuine nationwide consumer toilet paper shortage. Scarcity as well is all around us in e-commerce. Anybody who buys plane tickets online will recognize this. It can apply to offers like limited time only rebates and deals. A countdown to when the discount or deal closes can spur buys. The card shows how much the visitor saved with a call to action to check out before the savings expire and by offering free express shipping or something similar to those who purchase for a specific time of day. Number seven, price anchoring. Price anchoring states that the first price presented plays a significant role in the decision-making processes. For example, the price is regularly $129.99, which has been noted first, but it is currently on sale for just $59.99. That first price, $129.99, serves as an anchor, making the discounted price seem like a total steal. The first, higher price sets the stage and becomes the anchor that makes the second price more appealing. Let's say the greats didn't use price anchoring. $89.10 might seem like too much to spend, but the $99 original price indicates that it is not. You might find price anchoring limits comparison shopping as well. Number 8. Familiarity Familiarity determines whether participants processed with persuasive information analytically or non-analytically. In simple words, familiarity states that you prefer things and people you are familiar with. Yes, seriously. Studies have even found that you are more likely to fall in love with someone the more often you see them. Your happiness is correlated with how many things you are familiar with. This fondness for familiarity is why you will often find the car in the top right-hand corner of a store or why you're so attached to the neighborhood you live in, or why you tend to order the same one or two meals at your favorite restaurant. Familiarity comes down to three factors. Cognitive fluency, how easy is it to think about something? Prototypically, how similar is it to others in the same category or industry? Habit, how well does it match previous, similar experiences? That is the primary reason why knowing your audience is so influential. Being familiar with the experiences and language they are expecting can be incredibly useful for increasing conversions. Number nine, attentional bias. Attentional bias states that people pay more consideration to emotionally stimulating factors and make light of other factors. The more intensely and touching something is, the more attention you pay to it. It makes sense, right? That's why fear and sex tend to be so persuasive. We all remember that Sarah McLaughlin commercial, so when the WWF is attempting to raise cash to save and support animals, they tug on the heartstrings a bit with emotion-evoking visuals. A cheerful, flourishing baby polar bear who may keep cool, all thanks to you? That is a pretty positive emotion. It is no surprise that this type of messaging is conveyed over and over again through copy and images. Number 10, visual cueing. Visual cueing states that your attention and focus while visiting a site can be managed by design. CXL Institute recently conducted an interesting study on visual cueing. They compared six different visual cues against the control. Human looking away, human looking towards, hand-drawn arrow, triangular, line, highlight. What about the results? Visual cues do not impact how quickly something is spotted, but they affect how much attention should be paid to something. In this case, a sign-up form. The hand-drawn arrow performed the best for anyone interested. 
You can use simple ways to apply it to your store, like use visual cues to direct visitors down the page, especially if you have valuable product information below the fold. And you can also implement visual cues for product recommendations to fuel your upselling and cross-selling strategy. That will result in fantastic profit. The better you are at creating perceived value, the higher you can bump your market price and reduce consumer surplus. This does not mean selling something that turns out to be smoke and mirrors. It means selling an expectation that matches reality. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you can join the Live Hive squad and be part of our channel. Thank you for watching.